Yo, what's good fam? It's your man Jay. I'm back with another episode of Evolutionary Comics and um, pretty much this is a Catching Up With Jay episode. I got some new books that I want to show you guys. I want to get some shout outs to uh, a couple of different places that I visited. Um, a lot of stuff been going on. I've been extremely busy with catching up on paperwork at work. Um, what else have I been up to? Doing, doing my photo shoots. Our business has picked up. You know, it's tax season and everything, so, you know, that's how uh, that's how life goes. But I am very, very thankful um, of where I am in life right now. I hope you guys have been collecting some really dope stuff. Um, what else has been up with me? Um, I've been on a couple episodes uh, with uh, Chillmonger. Um, check out his YouTube channel. Put the, put the link below. Um, he's been doing, like, uh, some Black Panther reviews, and I've been on his channel for that. Um, really, really dope analysis of um, this ultimate Black Panther run. And then uh, we did, um, I think we did uh, the number eight or nine of uh, e viewings uh, run on Black Panther, which unfortunately is coming to an end. Um, I thought the book was dope. I thought Eve was doing doing a really good job with everything. People are going to have criticisms as far as where they think the book should be going or where they think the character should be going. And especially when it comes to uh, Black Panther because Black Panther is a very uh, tender character uh, for Blurds. Um, that is, to me, that is the most prolific uh, black comic book character um, that's been ever created since 1966. Um, a lot of people like myself, older guys, uh, we've been Black Panther fans for a long, long time. And, uh, you know, that was the foundation of uh, me collecting comics um, in my later years of life. When earlier it was all about Peter Parker. Um, and then when I grew up and got back into it, it was all about T'Challa. So, um, anyway, without further ado, let's get it. My wife's sleep, I can't yell it. show you guys a couple of books that I picked up. And All right, so starting off with what I picked up um, in this past week, um, I picked up this uh, Napalm Lullaby, which is by Rick Remender. This is, uh, this is a pretty good book. It, it started out really good. It was a little confusing um, as, to, as far as like, you know, what's going on with the characters, what's real and what's not. Um, I think it's like, um, you know, when you put those goggles on, I, I forget what it's called, but um, you do like you're in an alternate reality or whatever has a little bit to do with that but it is really really a, a eye-catching book um as far as uh, from the literary standpoint um the art is by Bengal. i'm not sure who that is but it kind of matches you know what's going on i think it's really dope so far but uh you guys check that out all right and unfortunately this is the last issue of uh gang war with luke cage um, we always want, I, I forgot what happened to um, that other Luke Cage book that was supposed to come out. Um, I remember it was like some controversy and, you know, those other people might have had an issue with some of the stuff that was going on. I hope that one day comes out, they put it like in, um, like in a compilation book or something like that. But this is issue four. This is by Rodney Barnes, the great Rodney Barnes. Um, to me, it was, it was kind of a lackluster issue. As far as, you know, having that mindset that, you know, you know it's ending and felt like, you know, it was just a wrap-up issue just because it's time to wrap it up. But anyway, I picked that up because I had to complete the set. And now on to, uh, let's throw this one in. This is um, that Sp Spectacular Spider-Man book with uh, Miles and Peter. I always like when they team up, you know, especially with their quirkiness and them trying to get along. As far as they get along, but um, it's like Peter's the older, older like the big brother, which is kind of dope, though. It's uh, him guiding Miles, and Miles sometimes having to be the adult in the situation, being more mature than Peter, because you know Peter's Peter. Yeah, pause. All right, so as always with Black Panther things, I collect all Black Panther issues of everything that comes out, and um, so. 
like I told you guys, that was like uh, the foundation of me coming back into collecting comics is I wanted every issue um, that I could possibly get my hands on of Black Panther. I wanted every issue of all runs that said Black Panther. Um, I got all the jungle actions, of course, and everything else. Still don't have that Fantastic Four 52 or 53 and uh, some of the Avengers stuff, too. I did pick up um, a new... Avengers book with uh, I forgot that that was a key that I picked up. I might show y'all that but anyway But anyway, I got the character variant um, And this is It says by Momo, Peach Momoko I'm not sure if that's right, but yeah, so this was the one in ten pick this one up And this is one the one that was sought after this is the one in 25 Mobili cover with um with Storm on it, the new Storm on it, the Ultimate Universe Storm. I know people are going to be looking for that one. And this is another variant with Shuri on it. And I didn't do my research to see who uh, who all did these covers. I just thought they were dope and made sure that, um, that I tried to get all of them. And this was a, a slept on one. This one, um, I don't think people really pay too much attention to it, but... I like the cover. I think it's kind of dope. And and of course, this is the regular uh, cover A. Um, I think with, with this book, I think Brian Hill is doing a great job. Um, I think that he is, you know, for me, he's in my top five writers right now. Um, as far as the stories that he tells, he's like um, across the board, everything that he's been writing has been on point and um, it's very interesting to see where this book goes like I say if you uh, want a full review um, check out Chill and if you want a full review check out Chillmonger's channel um, where we talk about it on the live and I think he's had a couple of other lives I missed one the other night um, you know I had to go pick up my daughter do some other errands and stuff like that but um, yeah it, it's been on point as far as like trying to analyze the book and pretty much um, so I guess it's like the avatar of Khonshu and Ra who are um, plotting on Wakanda. They're plotting on uh, trying to take over, I guess, and they're trying to take out uh, T'Challa, I believe. Now, there's a spy amongst the ranks in, uh, in Wakanda's defenses, and, um, you know, of course, the king is trying to figure it out. That's a key point. Um, so in this particular Ultimate Universe, um, I'd be remiss to mention that T'Challa is king again. Um, and he's not married, or he's not with Storm, but he's with Okoye. Okoye is the queen, which is an interesting twist on things because, you know, normally, you know, you're, it's Nakia in the movies, and then it's Storm, and he really hasn't been linked to anybody else since Monica Rambeau. Um, the college days don't count, I'm not going to even mention that. But, um, so he's married to Okoye, and... It's, they have a weird relationship, you know, it's like she's devoted to him, um, but it doesn't seem like there's any real romance in that relationship. Um, so, in this book, not to give away any spoilers, but, um, you know, he, he meets, meets up with Storm, who actually, in issue one, seemed like she was with uh, Killmonger. So, Killmonger's a different type character. He's, um, he's Killmonger from the old, not like you guys are used to, you know, the MCU version. I don't really count the MCU version um, too much because, to me, they just convoluted everything. But anyway, it is a good book. It is very interesting. I'm very interested to see where it goes. Um, if you're a Black Panther fan, if you're not, if you just like comics, it is a good read. Brian Hill is doing his thing, and, um, yeah, pick it up. All right, so I never, never paid any attention to um, the different... Uh, I guess Batman characters except for the signal he was the only one that I really had any interest in um, also um, the I am Batman series I picked up that it was okay I, I wasn't you know a super huge fan of it definitely not a fan of the writer of it so that's what kind of threw me off but um I've been picking up this Red Hood this is Red Hood the Hill by Sean Martinborough and um, I picked it up initially because of Sanford Green is doing the artwork. Sanford Green is one of my favorite artists, and um, I, I love his artwork. I love his spin on things. I, you know, really caught a hold of like Bitter Root because of the artwork, and the writing's been great with David Walker. But um, 
this book is pretty good. Sean, Sean is doing a great job so far in uh, issue two. It's really caught my attention. Um, the chick right here is Strike. And yeah, she's gonna come up later in the conversation. But um, you know, she's I guess she's like uh, the Red Hood's partner so much so much, maybe like the team captain of um of a squad that he's uh, he's had connections to. But it's a really good book and you know it started off really good. So y'all check that out too. Um, let's see, what else has been going on? Um nothing really. Like I said, just work and you know, um I, I know I kind of missed the whole hoopla with CGC and you know the drama I try to stay out of stuff like that because you know um, I have my own beliefs about different things and I really YouTube is really a funny thing because I was watching um I can't remember uh, the guy's name but I was watching Swaggle House and um, this guy uh, this older guy who's a comic book store owner he was like he made a video um, kind of getting on Swaggle House um, about you know the things that he was saying in one of his videos and it was like uh, he took everything personal but uh, Swag never said the guy's name or anything but this guy for me he's one of those people that is he's always complaining about something he's always upset about something and that's the foundation of his videos is you know is to me it's just negativity um, and that brings me back to my the reason why I mentioned it is because with my channel, um, I've always been doing like, you know, what's in my bag, showing you guys what I picked up and everything like that. And um, I don't know, I guess that kind of gets mundane. Um, so I want to focus more on reviews and um, talk about some of the lesser talked about comic books that I find like, you know, that are absolutely dope. And talk about the stories, the writers, the creators. The thing that I originally started this channel for, um, I want to get back to that. And, you know, like I always say, my focus is um, talking about uh, black creators, um, people of color, not, not to, you know, uh, kind of leave out the other, other people, you know, um, because I, I have, like, some, I love Hickman, I love um, Aaron, it's, it's a lot of people that I love as far as um, what they do for the comic book world, the culture of it, but um, I think that right now, we're at a time where a lot of the, like Black Panther with Eve, that that whole run shouldn't have ended right there. They should it should have gone 16 issues. You got to think about it. A lot of comics were going like one through 65. They were going like 65 issues deep. They would get a point where they sucked for a little while, and then they got better, and then you know, but they the run kept going. Now it's like if you have you know two or three bad issues. And all of a sudden they're canceling it. And I get the economical side of it, but um, I think a lot of these books need a chance. And especially when it's a good book and it's just the sales. So my take on that is, you know, I want to talk about more, um, bring more awareness to these books. And books like this, like, you know, Harriet Tubman, Demon Slayer. This is written by David Crownson. This is an absolutely dope series. I love this series. The covers have been absolutely dope. I haven't been able to get my hands on all of them, but the story is dope. And this is what I kind of try to do now is when I find a really, really dope series, whenever a new issue comes out, what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll read all the previous books um, that have already come out just to, you know, resubmit the dopeness in the story in, within me because I'm digging it like that. Um, let's see what else is up here. Um... Saladin Hamid's Abbott 1979. This is a really, I think this one is coming to an end again. Um, this uh, particular run. And this is, okay, so these, these, this is stuff that I gotta put away. This is uh, issue three and four. But yeah, that, that's what I'm, that's the kind of things that I'm talking about as far as what people are picking up. I just wanna bring awareness to those other characters. Um, I'm gonna be doing a video on um, keys, you know, it's one of those things where your keys don't open my door, and because uh, people are hope 181 and they're going crazy over a lot of these other books that I absolutely care nothing about. Um, if I had it, I would sell it just to get more um, higher grades of the keys that I want. Definitely trying to get to that Fantastic 452. Um, I'm doing a lot of talking. I'm gonna try to slow down, but I just don't want this video to be 
super, super long run. Um, I forget the lady's name that I'm listening to her channel, but I'm going put to put it in the link. Um, it's a really dope music channel. Um, I got playing in the background on YouTube. So, y'all check out the link. You know, she's, she's pretty dope. So, yesterday, on a side trip, I went to um, Bat City Comics in Bradenton. My man, Mac, was always talking about this particular comic book shop. And um, whenever I go into a really dope comic book shop, I like to give them a shout out. So, if you're in the Bradenton area or, you know, the Tampa area, anywhere in the area, go down to Bat City Professionals. This is their uh, sticker. I got a sticker. and I, I love stickers. I got a bunch of stickers that I, I never actually apply to anything. I just love collecting them when I collect, you know, other stuff. I'm a collector. But, um... They're really, really dope, so go down there and check those guys out. I'll put their link in the description. They follow me, so shout out to you guys if you're watching the video. I definitely will be back. Um, I talked to Mac this morning, so uh, we're going to be making a visit together. So, yeah, I might record that. I might come in and, you know, do some video footage. But what I picked up was um, I needed this number two. It takes, what is it? It takes one to kill one. It takes one to kill one. That I guess that's what I said. But this is Blade and... I picked this one up because number one is Blade. I need all, every Blade comic I can get my hands on. But it also has Doom, my favorite villain. So um, I picked this up yesterday. And I also picked up, as I was saying with the Red Hood book, I also picked up Red Hood uh, 51. And I was actually looking for a 52, but I was um, thrown off a little bit because I was looking for the first appearance of Strike. And this is her first appearance. Um, 52, I guess, is her first appearance. No, because I, I just looked in the book and she is in uniform. I guess it's her first appearance on the cover is 52 as Strike. But, yeah, she's one of the characters that uh, that are leading the Red Hood's uh, little little team or whatever. So, I'm definitely going to be checking this one out. And this is by Sean Martin Bro as well. So, I guess he's been on this for a minute. Um, if you go to my Facebook channel... Um, or even my Instagram channel, which is Evolutionary Comics. Y'all hit me up. Y'all talk to me there. Um, but y'all also get a link to uh, Sean's uh, channel, his his social media and stuff like that. Because I followed him just to see what's going on in the brother's life. All right. So, like I said, I got a lot going on. Like, it is, I don't know if this seems like, you know, like a super fast video or whatever. But I also got an unboxing. I got some stuff in the mail. And... I'm super excited. I've gone a whole week with um with not opening in this box. My wife asked me last night. She was like, "What's up with the box that you won't open?" So, um I'm a collector of things, collector, and my favorite group of all time is in this box. So, check this out. So, I've been, um, oh, and I got a sticker. So, Super 7, I don't know if you guys can see that, if it's focusing in on that. But, um, they sent me a sticker. Shout out to Super 7. I'm going to hit you guys up in the comments and, uh, and I'm going to put a link down there. So, Super 7 is, has become one of, like, my favorite places to get collectibles from. And it's dope that they sent me that. That's the invoice. This is I got it all wrapped up. So like I said, people that know me know that Outcast is my favorite group of all time. I got the word Outcast tattooed across my back and boom. So AT Aliens uh, Outcast. These are hella dope. They got a lot of hip hop characters. They got a lot of this music characters period. But um, I got this. Yeah, that's that's dope. That's dope. So I don't know what what's y'all favorite Outcast album? That that y'all hit me up in the comments and and tell me that who's your favorite, Big Boy or Andre Three Thousand? Three Stacks is my all time favorite rapper of all time, hip hop artist. He is um uh, my my goat when it comes to uh to hip hop. So um that's saying a lot. But I hate that people sleep on Big Boy because Big Boy is Almost equally is dope. It's all about your goal is who speaks the most to you. So, um, yeah, I got this. Super excited about that. And because it's outcast, because it's outcast, 
I got two. So I had to get two. Um, I think I may open one just to have uh, have the figures out. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, that's a hard. Yeah, that's. A, I think that's the reason why I bought it like that. But anyway, I got one. It's normally one to rock, one to stock, like sneakerheads say. But I got two of these. So yeah, and I got another sticker. All right, so to finish this video out, um, I'm going to show you the last little bit of comic books that I picked up. Tell you guys what I've been reading and stuff like that. Um, but as always, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Um, also, if you do at Evolutionary Comics, if you at me, um, you know, whenever you're looking for the channel, that brings up my channel. I got to figure out the algorithm with YouTube because uh, for some reason, like if you just put in Evolutionary Comics, they it comes up with the high evolutionary. I think that's what's hurting me as far as exposure as well. Hope YouTube, you know, kind of helps me out and figures that out. But um, anyway, um, thanks to my man, you know, down at Bat City Professionals, the Bat City Comics shop down there. Um, there, 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 there. Bat City, uh, Bat City Comics down in Bradenton. Um, he figured that out when we were talking, you know, and I was telling him to follow me. Um, he, or he actually was going to follow me just because I mentioned I have a YouTube channel. Um, he figured it out that if you put the at Evolutionary Comics, it comes up that way. But anyway, alright, so I've also picked up um, Resurrection of Magneto. Um, I've been trying to stay up on uh, all the X-Men, you know, stuff that's going on with Rocco and uh, everything. Definitely because of Storm, but um, I've been reading X-Men Red, uh, X-Men, and yeah, so, and Resurrection of, of Magneto. I haven't got, I didn't read issue one yet because I'm still trying to catch up, um, but, you know, anything with Storm in it, you know, the Queen, she got to get picked up. Um, this is also by Saladin Hamed. I really like his writing. Don't know if you guys are reading this by, on Image Comics, but this is Terror War number nine. Um, I think I am on, I'm looking down because I got the stack down. I think I'm on issue five, but I'm going to catch up with this today because, like I said on uh, Instagram, today is going to be a day that's dedicated to um, reading and enjoying life. I'm going to hang out with my daughter. Um, me and my wife are going to go do some photo shoots to make a little money. And, um, yeah, do, doing the things you love. So I have my coffee. Um, I'm listening to some music, and I'm talking about comics, and that's what makes me happy. Those are the things that make me the happiest in life. So, shout out to anybody that's doing what makes you happy. Um, I'll, I'll wait to do that. But anyway, um, this is Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees. This is one of the most popular, but still, to me, underrated comic books. I mean, this is, the story is dope. Um, I think, I can't, I think his name is Patrick Horvath. Forgive me if I say the say the wrong first name, but I think it's Patrick Horvath. But he does the artwork and the writing on this, and it is basically like uh, the Bernstein Bears um, crossover, Richard Scary uh, serial killer book, like that, like Bernstein Bears, Richard Scary meets uh, Dexter. Like I, I talked about it before, but this one is issue number one. Can't remember which um, print printing this is, if it's like the third printing or whatever, but. Um, I get all of these because this is a really dope series. I love the series. Do think that um, it is going to win some awards at some point, and it should because, from a literary standpoint, it's being excellently written. It is one of the series that I personally enjoy the most. Um, speaking of great literary uh, writers standpoint uh, stories, Blade Number Eight. This was a variant cover. This was the one in twenty-five uh, Villa Lobos. But um, this was put in my box by my man Frank at Emerald City Comics. I'm never going to do one of these videos without giving them a shout out. That's my local LCS. Um, Bat City is really close. Uh, if you hear me go on and talk about Emerald City, Bat City is really close. I, I got a lot of love from them uh, last night. And um, yeah, but anyway, picked up this. This is uh, by Brian Hill as well. And the, I think this is being a. Uh, this is. This is. A little. I think this series is being canceled too, which sucks because because it's like all of our characters are are getting these uh these little short runs and it's all about like a cash grab. Oh, it's a new Blade comic book out. There's a new Black Panther comic book out, and the true fans of the of the character are running out to grab those books, and especially the number ones. Again, um, bringing up his name um, because I think his channel is absolutely dope. But Chillmonger talks about that, about how, you know, 
we're settling for less and we're spending all our money in focusing on jumping on things that we know aren't going to last and um, we should demand more from Marvel and uh, a lot of these other places. That's one of the reasons why I'm really big on independence and uh, showing love in that direction, um, which I'm going to do, do a better job of because, you know, Image does a great job. I've been digging boom, but there's a lot of other independents out there too. Um, this is Spider Boy, which surprisingly is a really good series. I don't know if I, I can say um, surprising because it's written by Dan Slott, but um, this is more like um, something that, that you give you know a young kid. If I recommended uh, any books for like young kids to start off with, it's this one because um, I forgot his name. I want to I want to call him Billy. But um, the young, the young guy, who's a Spider Boy, you know, he's I think he's like eight years old or something like that. But um, it, it's really good. It's a really good book. And um, yeah, anyway, I'm not gonna go on and do a review on it right now because I got other stuff to talk about. So, all right. So in this next book, yo, it, it's crazy because um, uh, it's written by David Walker, David F. Walker, and. Um, I was introduced uh, to David F. Walker through Bitter Root. Um, that was I, I might have read some of his books prior to that, and just really, you know, didn't really dig in. But Bitter Root is what solidified me as a fan. Um, him and Sanford Green, as I spoke about earlier. But um, picking up this particular comic book, it took me. I'm 52 years old. It took me all these years. I thought Gordon Parks actually created Shaft the character. I didn't know that somebody else created, not alone, just somebody else, but I didn't know it was a white guy. So um, picking up this particular series, I found out that Ernest Tidyman was the actual creator of the Shaft character from you know the movies. Um, I absolutely loved it. That was one of my early heroes when I was probably like maybe nine or ten. Maybe even before then, you know, when I started watching the movies, I don't even know if I was supposed to be watching the movies, but I did catch on that they were showing nudity in, in a couple of them flicks. But um, I always, you know, looked up to that character as a Superman. But I didn't know it was a comic book until I came across these books. So this is Shaft by David F. Walker, um, and Billaquise Everly is the artist on these books. And I love all of the the black exploitation era type books and um I love the black exploitation era as far as movies go with um you know Goldie the Mac you know all of those types of things but um yeah so I picked up this and I got issue two and unfortunately I don't think I think there's uh Sanford Green covers as well but I haven't been able to find all of them but yeah so that's um that's something else that I, I picked up as well. I already read this particular series. I didn't realize it was a six issue series, so I only got one through four. So I got to get five and six because I got to issue four and thinking it was going to be a wrap up issue. And it wasn't. And I was like, dang, Shaft's still trying to fill out, find out who killed this girl. I'm like, what the heck? But um, also, speaking of that, let me see. Where are they? Ah, here we go. And this is, I guess, another series of it. But um, this is, I think this one is actually one through four, but this is Shaft, Imitation of Life. So, I picked up these as well. I haven't read this, this particular series because I'm still waiting to read five and six of uh, the previous one. But these, as you see, is also by David F. Walker. And the artwork on these is by Dietrich Smith. So yeah, it's one through four. And, uh, oh, this, I'm all mixed up. I got my books mixed. Part 1, Before and After. Part 2, Easy Money. Part 3, Love and Loss. And Part 4, All the World's a Stage. I think that was, I thought that was a Nas song or something like that. But anyway, that's the stuff that I picked up. And before I get out of here, I want to give some shout outs from Instagram. Cause um yeah, it's, I got a lot of it's a lot of love on Instagram. So let me see who I've been talking to. Already gave a shout out to um the Chillmonger. So y'all check out his his channel. Um, I just you know got a great idea from uh, the Blurred Library 
I can't remember her name, but I'm going to ask her her name. I'm going to go back and look through and ask her her name. She's really dope. Um, Y'all check her out on Instagram. I'll also put her link in uh, in the description as well. But a lot of times, um, Keisha, that's her name. It's, it's right there. It says Keisha. Hey, Keisha. If you're watching this, hey. Um, but she, um, she does a lot of book um, reviews, and she shows a lot of books uh, that are from, what do you call it? Afrofuturism is, uh, I guess that's the way you you would kind of categorize it. But um, it's a lot of sci-fi, a lot of fantasy stuff like that. But a lot of books that, um, you know, other than comic books, that are really dope reads. Um, she talks about those and she displays those. And it's honestly, I can't keep up because um, my money be going to the comic books most of the time. But um, I really got to step it up on uh, my, my actual book reading like you know regular books and stuff all right um so the last book like that that um that i actually read was um children of blood and bone by i'm looking at the name and i can't uh think of how to say it correctly tomi ademi i i don't want to mess up her name so um all respect but um i absolutely love her writing it's like as far as um books go like full books that is that's my dope read so y'all check that out she has a new book coming out um, Children of Virtue and Vengeance, and that is um, the third book of the series. So if you're looking for um, an actual book to read, um, a novel type book to read, that, that's that's your, where your money should go. So y'all check her out. Check out her Instagram as well. Um, always check out my man Mac, the comic hunter. Uh, who else can I think of, of giving a shout out? Uh, Nerdy Girl Comics, um, give her a shout out because I follow her. Uh, let's see who else... Who else is there did I follow um my man Justin at no good comics uh, he he does I think he has an affinity for splash pages as well like that first splash page when you open up the book especially when it's like the Silver Age books those those are just to me those are doper than some of the covers so um shout out to him y'all check his his uh his he has like a YouTube channel and an Instagram so y'all check him out um David F. Walker, you know, y'all check him out. He's on Instagram. Uh, let's see who else, who else, who else we got. Um, a lot of, a lot of writers, a lot of artists are on Instagram. That's how um I I first started communicating with um a lot of people uh, was through Instagram, you know. And um, Merka and Dolpha, she's one of my favorite uh, writers and artists who, who does everything for the book. Um, I gave her a shout out for, uh, I think it was, can't remember which book, I don't want to say it, but I can't remember which book, Unnatural, that's, that's what it was, Unnatural, um, that was the first book I read of hers, but I gave her a shout out and she commented back, and then, uh, you know, we talked in the DMs a little bit, so, you know, shout out to her, y'all check out hers, and uh, of course my man Rodney Barnes, I always, always gotta have, at some point in one of these videos, I always gotta talk about my man Rodney, so, Anyway, y'all hit me up on Instagram. It's Evolutionary Comics. Um, y'all like, comment, subscribe, do all of that other stuff. Oh, I got those things from Super 7, but I got a great deal. I went and I bought um, Call of Duty 3 from, um, from GameStop, and they had this sale, buy one, get two free. I know that's crazy, but um, yeah. So I went in and I saw this Photon. And I got this one, uh, I think one of these was $11, but I got the other two for free. But this is the one that I wanted to pick up because I didn't have this one. And I ended up picking up this one, Izzy Hawthorne, who I don't know anything about. Picked that up, but seeing it was a, a sister. And then I also picked up Darla from Shazam, um, who's played by the extremely beautiful Megan Good. Um, you know, so yeah, I picked those up, and it was it was a steal. Cause I'll give a quick rundown. So I went in the GameStop to get Call of Duty. Um, I knew it was gonna be about you know sixty nine dollars, sixty five, sixty nine dollars, something like that. But anyway, it ended up being total like seventy one dollars. So I got that, but I renewed my little subscription thing. So I got the game for half off for like thirty five. Um, the subscription was like twenty five. So looking at around sixty some dollars for you know with tax so I picked up those pops which ended up being three pops for about eleven bucks 
So my total came out to like $71 for everything. But they also give you, um, I guess they give you money back. So like every month they give you like five bucks, a five buck credit. So 12 months, that's $60, right? But for buying everything, I got a $15 immediate credit. So that's 75 bucks, right? My math is correct and my math is mathing. That's correct. So I basically got all that stuff for free. And it's like, you know, you know, it's all love. So anyway, yeah, that was that was the great deal of the week. Um, yeah, anyway, I just wanted to share that with y'all so y'all be checking out these deals. Anyway, y'all continue to evolve. Y'all continue to check out my channel. Y'all bear with me because I know I'm slow to roll when it comes to putting out these videos. Um, like I say, I want to do a video on um, my key, your keys don't open my door. Um, and I'm going to talk about the keys that are, are vital to me as opposed to what's every the average comic book collector finds as a key. You know, keys are books that have um, prolific moments, um, first appearances, different things like that. That's what categorizes certain books as keys. So if you don't really care about the Hulk, per se, um, and your favorite character is Brother Voodoo, then Strange Tales 169 is going to be your book as opposed to, you know, a Hulk first appearance. Even though you take that book, but, you know, you, you get where I'm going with that. So I'm going to talk about that in another video. I'm also going to talk about um, what I'm going to be sending to CGC because uh, shout out to CGC, all my family down there, my OG Paul, um, my Master Chief, um, shout out to Sean, congratulations on uh, being named Vice President. Um, shout out to Matt, the, the OG. Everybody down there, shout out to my man Ronnie. Um, I heard your son is going to be doing... Um, doing an exclusive I don't know if I'm supposed to be telling that or, or whatever but so congratulations on that and um shout out to my GC3 brothers I miss you guys and uh you know y'all shout y'all holler at me sometime I'm, the only person I talk to is Matt and Paul everybody else y'all done faded on me so uh, y'all hit me up let me hit me in the comments my man Brian um uh, he's still representing for the black um comic book black certified comic book graders we're the first two in history i always say i'm the first but it was actually two of us in the class so um first two black comic book graders in cgc or grading history period me and my man brian so always give him a shout out on uh, much love I miss you guys and um anyway y'all continue to evolve and uh it's your man jay and i'm out peace